Good evening, everybody. My name is Bill Kowalewski. I'm with the Corps of Engineers from the Buffalo District, and I just want to welcome you tonight and thank you for coming to our, our meeting tonight, our workshop. Um, the subject of tonight's meeting is the public technical project planning session for the Phase 4 remedial investigation of the wastewater treatment plant of the former Lake Ontario Ordnance Works. Um, that's the focus of our meeting tonight. We wanted to bring our technical team out and give you a chance to engage them one-on-one uh, -on -one and as a group so that uh, as we go forward with this project we do so with a full understanding and awareness of the concerns and the issues and the recommendations that are out there in the local community um, before i turn it over to arlene to get into some of the specifics of uh, conducting tonight's meeting i just wanted to introduce you to the course technical team that have come out tonight and um, as I call your name, if you could just uh, either raise your hand or, or stand so people know uh, who you are. Uh, first, Arlene Krush, our out outreach specialist. If you call our 1-800 number or send us an email or contact us, uh, Arlene is the person on the other end of the line uh, taking your call and your email. Uh, Linda Houston, project manager. Linda's job is to oversee the uh, projects that we're conducting at the low site, including this one here. Jeff Hall, project engineer, sitting in the back row. Uh, he is our technical lead uh, for all of our contractor work and all of our technical work. Liza Finley, Liza is a risk assessor, and as uh, is Dr. Karen Kyle sitting next to her. <coughs> Bruce Sanders is our public affairs officer, standing up front. David Frothingham, David is the chief of our environmental engineering team and Steve Bousquet is the chief of our environmental health team. Natalie Watson is in the back. You signed in with her. She's uh, providing our logistics support tonight. And certainly not last uh, or least, uh, Sandy Staggerall and Sean Carney are two lead contractor representatives. And they've been hired by the Corps to conduct this investigation and the field work, which is scheduled to take place uh, later this year. Um, Again, thank you for coming tonight. I also wanted to publicly thank the uh, volunteers with the Community Low Lab Group. They have researched this site and this project and were kind enough to provide us with a written summary of their concerns and their guidance as we move forward on this, and we, we definitely appreciate that. Uh, that was provided a few weeks ago, and the team's been working on that, and that has been included in the uh, agenda for tonight. And last, for myself, uh, as we conclude the meeting tonight, or actually as we, as we conduct the meeting tonight, we will, if issues come up that are related directly or indirectly to this topic that you would like us to follow up on, we will build the agenda for future meetings from what we get tonight. Uh, we do have another meeting scheduled for about the June time frame, and uh, we'll collect some info tonight from you on what you'd like to see happen at that meeting. Okay, that's enough for me. Uh, Arlene, would you mind taking over? Thank you, Bill, and thank you again, everyone, for coming. Just a couple of um, outreach things. We have comment cards at the back table so that you can provide us with input on tonight's meeting. Um, there are little business cards that have my email address and the phone number you can call if you need to reach me. There will be copies of the presentation available after the meeting to the table when you go out at the end of the meeting tonight. Um, let's see. If anybody wants us to send our periodic emails that have the news from the core on them and you're not receiving them now, we just very, like maybe once a month, send out an email that has um, the latest information on Niagara Falls Story site and like Ontario Ordinance Works. Please make sure that you get your email address on the sign-in sheet at the table in the back room. If you don't receive those now and you would like to to start receiving them. Um, we are videoing the meeting tonight because we wanted to make sure that we captured all of your input. Um, and there is also a code order here with your comments. Um, and we have received actual slides from the New York State DC 
I, I believe there, you have slides that you want to give later, and um, from Dr. Beck, he has a couple of slides that we will be showing during the dialogue portion uh, workshop later. So first we're going to do a presentation, then we'll be doing our poster session in the back, and then we will be rearranging the room while you're in the poster session for the actual dialogue part of the meeting. So now I would like to turn this over to Sandy Sagawal, our contractor for this work. Hi folks, as uh, Arlene mentioned, my name is Sandy. Um, Sean and I are working for the Corps in developing, developing the sampling analysis approach for the next phase of an ongoing remedial investigation that's being conducted at Lake Ontario Ordnance Works. Um, this is going to be phase four of the ongoing remedial investigation and it targets the wastewater treatment plan. Um, it's being conducted under the Defense Environmental Restoration Program for the formerly used defense sites. Um, one thing I should point out, um, there were some handouts when you first came in. Hopefully everybody grabbed one of those. If not, we might be able to pass some around. Um, the reason I bring that up is there is a couple of fact sheets in that handout. Uh, the first of which goes over just generally the status of Lake Ontario Ordnance Works, the environmental response that's going on. Um, and the second is specific to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, but also in that packet are some figures. Um, we're going to have those same figures in this presentation. And they're going to be a lot easier for you to see um, in the handout versus in the, in the presentation here. Does anybody need one of those? Just let me know and I'll bring it over to you. Okay. 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 While she's getting out, I'll continue on. Um, just to note that um, under the defense, uh, formerly, or excuse me, the Defense Environmental Restoration Program for formerly used defense site, there are actually multiple project types. This one is being conducted under a hazardous. Um, toxic and radioactive waste project. For those of you who this might be the first public meeting for Lowe or you don't know that much about the site, uh, we've included this slide just to bring you up to date. Lake Ontario Ordnance Works um, was a production facility for trinitrotoluene toluene TNT. It was constructed in the early 1940s and only operated for about nine months after <coughs> it had closed down and then there were some um, several other Department of Defense facilities that were built after that. Um, it's comprised of about 7,500 acres. Um, it's located up in the northwest uh, portion of Niagara County, actually a little due east of where we are right now. Um, it's loosely bordered on the west, excuse me. It's loosely bordered on the west by Route 18, uh, to the north by Youngstown Lockport Road, to the east by uh, Porter Center Road, and then it extends just south of Swan Road. And it's also bisected by Balmer Road. Um, some of the other um, information that's included in here, some of the different shading that you see, the brown and the gray, are other areas that have been investigated as part of the environmental response that the Corps has undertaken. Um, and the wastewater treatment plant is actually right in the center, right there in that yellow area, um, in the center of the site, and that received waste from various operations that were uh, ongoing on the property. Um, what's the next? Tonight, uh, the meeting is set up a little bit differently than it had been in the past, as Arlene mentioned. Uh, we're doing a very brief presentation just to give you some background information. Um, and then we're going to be breaking for a poster session for about a half an hour. And then we're going to invite those who are interested back for a roundtable discussion where you'll be able to have uh, more comment and input um, into our proposed sampling and analysis approach. Um, as a preface to the rest of the presentation, we wanted to present the overall strategy for the remedial investigation that's ongoing, including that of the wastewater treatment plan. Um, and that is uh, using their authority under the Defense Environmental Restoration Program for formerly used defense sites. Uh, the Corps will investigate and respond to the potential adverse environmental impacts from past Department of Defense activities. And this is the same strategy that they've used on the other um, areas of concern as well. Um, and they'll be using that strategy for the wastewater treatment plant. Um, in conducting the investigations and the environmental response, they use a process that was developed under the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, uh, otherwise known, excuse me, otherwise known as CERCLA. And I'll just be using that acronym as we kind of go forward because it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, this illustrates the CERCLA process. It's uh, comprised of distinct phases, starting with uh, discovery of a site, 
through investigation and then if necessary through uh, remedial design and remedial action. Um, it's certainly not specific to the low site. This is used at all hazardous waste sites uh, that the EPA requires any kind of environmental response. So um, this was developed by the EPA and it's used pretty much for any type of these types of investigations. Um, to note, the uh, Lake Ontario Ordinance Works environmental response is in the remedial investigation phase and going into uh, the feasibility stage. Um, and the intent of the remedial investigation is to characterize the site and also gain enough data in order to assess the risk. There's been several other investigations that have been done uh, to date on Lake Ontario Ordinance Works. Some of the early investigations were the prelim preliminary contaminant assessment. Uh, and that included not only the wastewater treatment plant, but some other DOD facilities that had operated on the property. And then there was a limited remedial investigation as well, and that uh, targeted uh, some different areas, but also an underground waste line that used to convey TNT waste. Uh, one of the outcomes of these earlier investigations that the court realized is they, they needed a, a more comprehensive approach um, to the investigation of, of low. And then they started the, the phase remedial investigation of the entire project site. Phase one and phase two targeted multiple areas of concern um, across low. Uh, those have been completed in the past and reports for the investigation phase of that are already um, available for public review and have been out for a while. Phase three is recently completed. Um, that targeted specifically the underground utility lines that were on Lake Ontario Ordinance Works. Um, and that's actually uh, due to be out very soon. It's under final review as we speak. Um, one of the other outcomes is the uh, discovery of some underground storage tanks, uh, some of which, actually I think most of which have been removed, um, and a closure report uh, is pending for that. Um, and of note, one of those tanks was actually on the wastewater treatment plant property as well. Um, some of the outcomes of the previous investigation included an interim removal action of the uh, TNT, underground TNT waste lines. Um, so that's been completed already a few years ago. Um, and also combining some of the areas of concern into exposure units. Uh, we've identified 10 exposure units and they're basically combined on some of the contaminants, some of the history of the different areas of concern um, and proximity to one another. And this helped facilitate the risk assessment. The phase three report, as I mentioned earlier, is due out very shortly, and that will also uh, be released with the risk assessment. Uh, that'll include um, the phase three, as well as data from the phase one and phase two remedial investigation. One of the things we found is that we needed more information on the wastewater treatment plant before we can consider it fully characterized or even perform the risk assessment there. There's uh, quite a bit of information going on in this slide. So I'm gonna just take a few minutes to just kind of explain. The, the, the overall intent is to provide you with some previous investigation results for surface soil samples that have already been collected on the wastewater treatment plant. Um, but just to give you a little bit of an idea of the layout of the wastewater treatment plant, here are some of the features that are present out there. Uh, one is a partially, oh, excuse me, a partially demolished acid neutralization building that received acid waste from some of the other um, areas on Lake Ontario Ordnance Works. Uh, there was a pumping station to the south that received sanitary sewage, um, an Imhoff tank uh, that was a settling tank, and to the north and south there were also sludge beds um, that supported that. And then one of the main features you see here, this linear feature, uh, those are the side-by-side -side, um, TNT waste lines. Um, they've already undergone an interim removal action on this property. They were closed in place, so the lines are still there, but they've been gone and left. Um, the other thing to note is that their terminus of the TNT lines is the mixing house. Um, and that was the final uh, spot before all the waste went through a 30-inch outfall line and discharged to the Niagara River. Um, the mixing house is actually no longer there. As part of the interim remedial action, it was also removed. Uh, also to note, the area that's on the left in the lighter gray shading is a separate exposure unit than the area that's depicted on the right in the tan shading. Um, and this was known as the vicinity shops, and that had some of the, the uh, paint shop, the fabrication shop, and, and those type of shops. Um, so when we go forward in, in looking at the sampling and analysis approach, we're going to be concentrating on this area here. 
Um, just to give you a little bit of background on how to look at this for the actual results, um, it's color coding. The locations that you see in the kind of diamond shape here are samples that were sent for laboratory analysis. Uh, so, um, and the results are indicated by color. If you see the red up on the top, that indicates that there were volatile organic compounds. Um, if you see the yellow, semi-volatile organic compounds and so on. Um, something to note here, if it is red or yellow, that only means that we detected one of those compounds. It doesn't necessarily mean that that compound was reported at a concentration that exceeded any kind of like a risk screening criteria. This is very similar, but it uh, depicts the subsurface soil sample results. And as you can see here, uh, we have, certainly we have uh, subsurface soil sampling results for that other exposure unit, but we don't have really many at all for the wastewater treatment plant. And that's one of the reasons we find ourselves going into this phase four RI to gain additional information on that property. Um, you'll see the blue here. We do have a laboratory analytical data for those locations. Uh, they were uh, collected as part of the phase three investigation, but they're very specific to the underground utility lines only. So we're really uh, looking for additional information out in some of the more distal areas from the wastewater treatment plant features. With that, I'd like to uh, turn this over to Sean, and Sean will present to you some of the uh, sampling analysis approach that we've developed thus far. Thank you, Sandy. Again, my name is Sean. I'm a contractor with Corp Engineers. I work with ERT. In order to develop a successful remedial investigation, um, a, a very sequential process is necessary. Um, some of the steps we've, we've listed here uh, on the screen uh, and on the right-hand side. Uh, at this point, we are at st step two, which is the development of project planning documents. And what we would like to do tonight, what I would like to do uh, right now is, is provide to you some of our brainstorms, some of our ideas and proposals for a sample and analysis plan. And then the remainder of the night, uh, gain some feedback, some comments from you on those plans. Um, real quick, just to reorientate yourself, Sandy did a fantastic job. Um, the area that we're talking about is the wastewater treatment plant, centrally located at the former low and south of Balmer Road. Before we get started again, just a, a historical photo of the site, what it looked like circa 1944. Some of the structures that Sandy had mentioned. Uh, first of all, for any of you that have been to the site most recently, or recently I should say, probably the most familiar structure uh, is the partially demolished acid neutralization building, which is right here. Um, also, as Sandy mentioned previously, uh, this phase four remedial investigation will not focus on the vicinity shops which supported the wastewater treatment plant as they were involved and in, they were fully characterized during the phase one and phase two remedial investigation. Uh, that would be this area right here. You can see where it says shops pointing out. These are the vicinity shops. And <clears throat> excuse me. thirdly to note here, and probably most importantly, and it shows up great here, is this ground scar that you can see coming from the northeast and transcending the, the, the property. Uh, that is a ground scar from, from the TNT waistline. Um, it shows up well here, and uh, given the opportunity to go back out to the wastewater treatment plant property, we are proposing some sampling as well uh, along that line, although a, a remedial action has occurred there already. And we'll touch on that in just a few minutes. Um, in order to develop a remedial investigation strategy, uh, one tool that's used is a conceptual site model. Uh, this pictorial is an example of a, of a conceptual site model. Uh, it's not specific to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we're providing it to show you some of our tools that we use. Uh, the take home message from this is that we want to acquire adequate information uh, that will look at any potential receptor, meaning, for example, humans, uh, look at all constituents that are at the site, and also look at any potential receptor pathways that may cause unacceptable risk to, to a receptor, to humans. Uh, this, is, this is a fairly uh, complex pictorial, uh, so what I would like to do is not spend a lot of time on it right now, but if any of you do have any questions regarding it, um, please feel free to grab one of us during either the poster session or during the roundtable discussion, and we can, we can revisit this, um, this pictorial. 
in developing and proposing and brainstorming our ideas uh, for the remedial investigation, we had to come up with some objectives to know that we were successful. And our objective, objectives for this phase four remedial investigation are to fully characterize the nature and extent of constituents at the site and assess those constituent uh, levels in relation to ecological and pot potential ecological and potential human health risks. Um, if risks are found to be present, we will have acquired enough information to estimate the amount of impacted material and take further action um, to assess those areas. Um, as of yet, uh, we've brainstormed multiple activities that will be necessary again to complete this remedial investigation. Um, the first of which would be site preparation, which will include, which would include, excuse me, mobilization, um, vegetation clearance uh, to access various sampling locations that, that will be selected, um, the accumula accumulation and picking up of debris uh, along the site. If anyone, anyone has been out there recently or in the recent past, you know there are fallen trees, um, steel debris uh, lying around. And what we like to do is collect that and get that out of the way so it doesn't inhibit the sampling approach. Secondly, as I mentioned before, uh, we would like to take the opportunity, since we are going back to the wastewater treatment plant, to uh, conduct some field screening and confirmatory sampling along the TNT line uh, within the wastewater treatment plant proper itself. Thirdly, uh, we would like to collect surface and subsurface soil samples, and if necessary, groundwater samples, in, in order to fully characterize the constituents at the site. Um, at this point, we are proposing the various analytes and the various analysis uh, for these samples, such as metals, uh, volatile organic compounds, semi-volatile organic compounds, pesticides, explosives, and polychlorinated biphenyls, or, or more commonly known as PCBs. Uh, the EPA advocates using one of a variety of sampling approaches when uh, developing and designing a remedial investigation. In order to be conservative, we have proposed using two uh, sampling approaches, one of which is a systematic sampling approach, the second of which is a, a biased sampling approach. A systematic sampling approach uh, is an unbiased characterization of a, of a site, site-wide, and it's usual, utilized by sampling at regular intervals, usually on a grid system, uh, as depicted in the following figure. Uh, as you can see, this is the wastewater treatment plant, uh, pump station, acid neutralization tank, or actually, excuse me, acid neutralization building that Sandy pointed out, Imhoff tank, northern sludge bed, and southern sludge bed. The green dots, uh, excuse me, before I move on, this, this is figure E in your handouts, if, not, if you can't see this clearly uh, from where you are. Uh, the green dots represent proposed systematic sampling locations, at which locations a surface and subsurface soil sample would be collected and analyzed for, for the parameters that we mentioned on the previous slide, including volatile organic compounds, semi-volatile organic compounds, metals, pesticides, PCBs, and explosives. Now, as I said, we were trying to be very conservative in selecting and in brainstorming our sampling approach. So we've also um, brainstormed ideas for a bias sampling approach. A bias sampling approach um, uses historical information, uh, knowledge of the site to pinpoint locations that have a high, the higher, highest potential um, for potential impacts. Um, in, in this case, this may be what many of you are most familiar with. Uh, for example, um, there's a drum laying on the ground over there. Uh, people stored things there. We should probably sample it, that kind of a thing. There are non-random locations. Uh, this figure shows some of our ideas, some of our brainstorm ideas of, of biased location that should be visited. One example, as you can see on the right hand side, again, this is figure F and G in your handout. Uh, figure F and G are nearly identical. Uh, G you will not see in this presentation. What G is, it, it, it shows a historical photo with this diagram overlaid, so you can have an idea of, of how it may have looked um, or where the sampling locations would be the actual structures. Um, I'll pick one for an example. We can discuss it later during the poster session if anyone else has any other questions or during the round table. But for example, uh, you'll see um, G 
just to the east of the northern sludge bed, a purple circle. Um, that indicates a PCB surface sample. The reason that we've allocated this, this sample location is that during a historical review of, of photographs, we've noticed a transformer in that location. During the time period, uh, there is a high potential that PCB-laden oil was used in, in, in that transformer. If it had ever leaked, there's also a high likelihood that PCBs would remain in the surface soil. So that's just an example of, of why we've, we've located these various biased location points. Um, and again, if anyone has any further questions on, on these proposed locations, feel free to grab one of us during the poster session or during the uh, roundtable discussion. We can, look at, we can look at this further. Um, as I mentioned previously, um, since we are going to be back to the site, we would like to take the opportunity to revisit the TNT waistline. Um, and what we propose to do there is, again, a, a two-pronged uh, sampling plan, which would consist of field screening, systematic field screening sampling, which would um, essentially uh, give us a presence or absence of, of TNT uh, residue, and then a bias sampling approach, which well, we'll get into in just one second. Uh, if you look at figure F, although you will not see all these green dots uh, located on here, it will show the, the general uh, TNT line uh, tailing off to the northeast of the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, what we propose is a series, of, like I said, of systematic sampling locations, uh, which a field screening technique will be used. A field screening te technique will provide a presence or absence of TNT residue. From that information, we would allocate bias sampling locations. Um, for example, uh, say right here, uh, the field test indicated the presence of TNT residue. We would allocate a bias location there. At that point, we would take a surface soil sample and subsurface soil sample uh, and send it to a laboratory for, for, for anal analytical um, analysis. Now, once all the field activities have been completed and all the samples have been collected and laboratory analytical data has been uh, returned to us, it will be reviewed. That information will then be passed on to risk assessors to, be for, to perform a human health and also screening level ecological risk assessment. At that point, the phase four remedial investigation report will be developed, which will include all of the activities that we performed at the site, the an analytical data that we received from the sample results, and also the developed risk assessment, human health, and screening level ecological risk assessment. From that information, we will make some conclusions and recommendations, and we will provide some idea of a path forward from that point. Uh, there are two distinct pathways. First, there no potential risk is, is indicated, at which point no further action, uh, no further sampling uh, would be conducted at the site. The second of which is that there is potential risk involved with the constituent levels that are found at the site, at which point uh, further activity would be warranted, which may include uh, the development of a feasibility study. Um, these are the ideas that we've brainstormed thus far. Um, and again, I'd just like to reiterate that one of the main focuses for us to be here tonight is to hear your comments, to hear your feedback, uh, and we welcome that. And I hope that during, during the poster presentation and during the roundtable, we have a chance to discuss that with you. And at this point, I'd like...